Trapcast Express. Trapcast Express, it's Wednesday, March 22nd, 2017. Well, Chaos Frank has done it again. It's a story that's almost a month old, but it looks like everybody just missed it. Are you ready for this? Hey, if you're driving right now, be careful. You may want to pull over for this one. On February 26th of this year, during his visit to the Anglican Parish Church of All Saints in Rome, Francis said during a question and answer session, well, effectively, that if there is no Catholic Mass available for you, you can just go to the Anglicans instead. He said this is what was done in mission territory in northern Argentina, and the Vatican's Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith knows about it, and he thinks that that's a great ecumenical treasure that the Church in Argentina can offer to the Church in Europe. Here is what he said verbatim, quote, In the north of Argentina, there are the Anglican missions with the Aborigines, and the Anglican bishop and the Catholic bishop there work together and teach. And when people can't go on Sunday to the Catholic celebration, they go to the Anglican, and the Anglicans go to the Catholic because they don't want to spend Sunday without a celebration, and they work together. And here, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith knows this, and they engage in charity together, and the two bishops are friends, and the two communities are friends. I think this is a richness, or treasure, that our young churches can bring to Europe and to the churches that have a great tradition, unquote. We've got the full quote with context, with video, in Italian and in translation up on our blog on the Novus Ordo Wire. All right. Now, aside from Anglican worship being heretical, schismatic, and therefore objectively odious to God, there's another minor detail that we need to mention, and that is Anglicans do not have valid orders. That means their priests aren't really priests. Their bishops aren't really bishops. They're all just laymen or, well, lay women these days. But then again, the Novus Ordo Church's clergy aren't valid either, at least not most of them, and their liturgical rites are also heretical. So, hey, maybe Francis has a point. If you go to one, you might as well go to the other. Anyway, all that is covered in our blog post published yesterday, March 21st. Find it at novusordowatch.org slash wire, or just go to novusordowatch.org and click on the Novus Ordo Wire in the menu bar at the top. So, is this now finally the last straw for people? We can only hope so, although Francis has been delivering last straws on pretty much a weekly basis as of late. It's almost like the guy wakes up every morning and asks himself, what could I do today to prove that I'm not a valid pope? Well, unfortunately, it appears that for a lot of people, the answer is simply nothing because they have long abandoned the Catholic doctrine of the papacy. Now, I know that some people will say, oh, but we just want to play it safe. We'll just say Francis is Pope, just in case he is, but we won't follow him because we know he teaches heresy and all sorts of anti-Catholic error. Well, the problem with that is that such a position is not safe at all, because that's not reconcilable with Catholic teaching on the papacy. You see, to say that someone is the vicar of Christ has consequences. And if you think that the only consequence is his infallibility when making ex cathedra pronouncements, if you think that's all that the doctrine of the papacy is, then you do not have the foggiest idea about the papacy. Go back and hit your catechisms. No, in fact, it is quite the reverse. If you want to play it safe, so to speak, if you want to be on the safe side with regard to all this, then you ought to be a state of a contest. State of Archontism, the position that, as far as we know, there has been no true pope of the Catholic Church since the death of Pius XII in 1958, and that the current Vatican establishment is not the Catholic Church, is entirely safe theologically. Why? Because by adhering to it, you cannot be led into heresy nor into schism if you are faithful to Catholic teaching, of course. Even supposing, for the sake of argument, that the position were false, where would be the danger? What could you be accused of? 
The worst that could be said of you is that you were wrong about who the Pope was. You believed in good faith that there was no Pope when in fact there was one, but at least you acted consistently and in accordance with Catholic teaching to the best of your ability and in peace with your conscience. You could be accused of having made a sincere mistake, nothing more. A mistake regarding the identity of the true Roman pontiff, as many others did before in church history, and quite innocently. I mean, who could blame you for making a good faith mistake in these crazy times? You believed, based on your knowledge and understanding of Catholic doctrine, to which you are bound to adhere, that the authorities that imposed an entirely new modernist religion, filled with the foulest heresies, errors, blasphemies, and sacrilege, were not, in fact, the true authorities of the Church Jesus Christ founded. But, let's say, hypothetically, that it turned out that you were wrong. Even so, you rejected their religion because you did not believe that they were the authority established by Christ. That makes sense. And this is the worst that could be said of you, if you were wrong on this. You could not be accused of adhering to or spreading false doctrine, heresy, nor of refusing to be subject to the man you acknowledge to be the Pope, schism. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the safest route you can possibly take. Tradcast Express is a production of Novus Ordo Watch. Check us out at tradcast.org, and if you like what we're doing, please consider making a tax-deductible contribution at novusordowatch.org slash donate.